right, well, thanks for having me. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's happening with fruit and vegetable markets um, in 2023 and what we've seen so far. So I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about what we're seeing as far as macroeconomic conditions and how some of those might affect specialty crop markets and then move into some of the input cost changes we've seen over the past year and then conclude by talking about what that means for fruit and vegetable prices um, and what we see, saw in 2022 and what we're seeing to start 2023. So to start with the macroeconomic factors, um, you know, starting out with GDP, I'd like to look at that, just a good broad measure of the strength of the economy. We've seen just consistent upward growth over the past few years since the COVID recession, um, just really strong GDP. But what that kind of hides is the inflation. So if we look at real GDP, which uh, accounts for changes in prices, we've seen a little bit more of a stagnant um, period just the past couple of years. And that's because in 2022, we saw 8.1% inflation, which was the highest mark since 1981. Um, you know, really looking back since the, the Great Recession, 2007 to 2009, uh, we've been well below that 5% mark, closer to 4% um, in general. And so really seeing those numbers spike up um, this past year um, had some major challenges. So the big thing this does is for goods like fruits and vegetables, food in general, it makes consumers' budgets stretched a lot thinner than we're used to. You know, if I go to the supermarket and find eggs for $5 versus the $2 I'm more likely uh, or more used to spending, then it means I'm either going to have to cut back on the amount of eggs I buy or I'm going to have to be willing to spend more for those eggs. So uh, we see a little bit of that, and I'll get more into how that's affected some of our produce items over the past year. Uh, in a little bit. The other thing I'll point out is the strength of the dollar has increased. So this is the real broad dollar index. It compares the dollar to a basket of other currencies in the world. And we're looking at the strongest um, dollar since around 1985. So um, we've seen appreciation, which when we have a strong dollar, you know, is that good news or bad news? It really depends on which side of the market you're on. So if you're buying stuff from other countries, that's good news because it means you can afford more, you can buy more of their stuff for a cheaper price. But if you're selling stuff, then it means it's bad news because it costs them more to buy what you're selling. So, you know, this is one of those scenarios where we import a lot of our fruits and vegetables. So um, from a US producer perspective um, or a grocer perspective, it might be um, not quite welcome news because it means that other countries' products are going to be relatively cheap to U.S. consumers. Uh, so that's one thing to look out for. Now, as we focus on um, sort of the more farm-specific stuff, looking at inputs, in general, we've seen the prices of inputs increase a lot the last couple of years, um, but we've started to see a little bit of a slowdown on that increase. So if we're looking at chemicals, let's look at that blue solid line. Um, chemicals, we've still seen increasing a little bit, but fertilizer with the um, that maroon line, we've started to see fertilizer prices decrease in the latter half of 2022. And in the early months of 2023, if we look at raw fertilizer numbers, they've come down quite a bit, um, you know, decreased probably around five to 10% each of the last couple months. So we are starting to see more manageable fertilizer prices, although they are still a lot higher than what we're used to seeing, you know, really higher than where we were uh, two years ago. And then fuel prices have been really volatile. We've seen diesel prices um, kind of remain elevated with some of their supply chain disruptions there, but there's been a lot of volatility with fuel prices, but seeing those overall come down from the peaks where they were in early 2022. Now, looking at what this means in general, comparing total prices paid, those have been up around 10% from um, the previous year, so it's a, compared to January of 2022, up 10% in January of 2023. Um, but the good news is prices received have started to come up as well. So for a while, it was just those prices paid. Um, you can see that red line, pretty solid, steady increase, whereas the prices received, you know, sort of less of a, a steady increase, more volatile jumps, and then decreases. So um, 
we have started to see those come up though at least. So that's alleviating some of the pressure that these high input prices have had on farmers. Now, when we're talking about specialty crops, we always have to talk about labor. Um, yeah, I like showing this graph because um, the gray line shows all farms in the US. They spend only about 10% of total revenues go to labor. So um, labor less important there, but looking at nursery and greenhouse producers, those are closer to 33% um, and fruit and vegetable producers are somewhere between 20 and 30%. So a high percentage of um, really highest input cost that specialty crop producers use is on labor and labor has just gone up recently. So looking at what's going on with labor markets, the unemployment rate is now um, at its lowest level in 53 years. So looking at this chart, you know, since the, the 2007-2009 recession, we've seen unemployment rate really just decline. It reached around 3.5% to 3.7% before uh, the COVID recession, but then just shot up above 14%. But it's since gone back to below the level it was before that recession. So um, that just happened a couple months ago. And so with the strong unemployment rate, you know, that makes it a little bit harder. Um, companies have to compete a little bit more for labor than they would um, in other times. And so that's part of the reason we've seen some of these wages increase, uh, especially for farm labor, looking at um, wages up around that $15 range and higher. Um, I will say, though, that the unemployment rate doesn't tell the whole story. Um, one other thing to look at is labor force participation rate. And so this looks at the percentage of Americans who are looking for a job um, out of total Americans, whereas unemployment rate just looks at the percentage who have jobs among those who are either working or looking for a job. So it's possible that the unemployment rate can be low, but it's because people just stopped looking for jobs. We see that to some extent, just looking at this line, it's a bit lower than where it was pre-pandemic. So that kind of suggests maybe some Americans retired early and haven't necessarily gotten back into labor force and um, aren't gonna be at that level. So it'll be interesting to see where that level, um, the participation rate ends up just to see uh, you know, how many people are gonna be in the labor markets, um, just to understand wages producers are gonna have to pay moving forward. Now with labor, one thing that's been big in agriculture has been the H-2A program. And so looking at the position certi certified, we see some of our neighboring states, Georgia and Florida are among the leaders. Um, you know, the Southeast, we have a lower adverse wage rate. So that's the wage rate that's paid um, um, through the program, um, lower than other parts of the country. It has gone up a lot this year, um, but still lower than where we are out West. So for instance, Washington and California are also leading producers, but have to pay a lot more for that program. And so this can be a good program to obtain additional labor uh, for an operation. And so I will mention that the, um, the Alabama Department of Ag and Industries, um, as well as Adam Rabinowitz, um, he's a economist with Extension Economist with us too. Um, they're, they've been doing some programs and will continue doing programs in 2023 to uh, help provide information about this program and how it might apply to different operations. So uh, you might want to watch out for information on that in the coming months. Now, shifting towards what's going on with fruit and vegetable markets to start the year, let's just look at what's happening to farmers' prices received. So for vegetable prices, this is just looking at an index of what farmers are receiving month to month compared to 2021. So in 2022, we saw um, in this green bar, they're a lot higher than 2021. So we've seen pretty strong jumps in terms of the prices that farmers are actually getting. Um, and that has continued towards the end of 2022 and uh, the beginning of 2023, we forecast that continuing. So stronger vegetable prices, on the fruit side, similar story. So the green line showing 2022 prices, uh, red showing 2021, and then purple showing a, an average of the 2018 to 2020 period. So 
2022 prices are up a lot higher than both the three-year average and 2021. So strong jumps there, um, kind of supporting what I was saying earlier in terms of prices receiving, increasing overall for the economy, but especially crop producers are also seeing that as well. Now, shifting to what consumers are paying, I like to look at what's happening at the retail level because it can kind of put together um, what consumers are doing and what trends might uh, happen that could affect farmers later on. So just looking at produce sales, this is from um, scanner data from some grocery stores and supermarkets, stuff like that. And let's focus on these dark blue bars. First thing first, we've saw in 2020 a huge jump um, amidst COVID of produce sales, you know, about 44 um, billion pounds of produce sold, which was about an 11% jump from the previous year. And in the next couple of years, we've seen that decline a little bit, you know, down about 3.5% the last couple of years, but still well above where we were in 2019. So we've seen some pretty sustained growth in terms of products sold in terms of a, a weight basis, but in terms of a dollar basis, we've seen that growth even higher. So we saw about a 12% increase in produce sales in 2020, but that's continued, um, you know, jumped 3% in 2021 and 5% in 2022. And that's sort of where we see inflation playing a role. You know, we saw a decrease in the total volume of produce sold each of the last couple of years, but we've seen an increase in total sales. So even if people are, um, are cutting back as they have inflation, they're cutting back on what they're, uh, they're purchasing, they're still willing to spend quite a bit of money on produce. And we've seen that, especially with some of our major holidays where uh, produce tends to be up. You know, we had the Super Bowl last month and then we have Easter coming up. You know, you ask people what they plan to do. Um, you know, only about 20% say that they plan to spend the same amount that they did last year. So most of them, most of the respondents of this survey tended to say that they are willing to expand their budget as these prices go up. And so that's why we've continued to see uh, growth in these dollar sales for produce items. I'll go through one more thing with um, produce items, kind of breaking it down by fruits and vegetables. And so each of these, uh, these lines show numbers compared to the previous period um, or the previous year of the same period. So looking at the fourth quarter of 2022, we see vegetable sales were up about 7% relative to where they were the same period of 2021. Um, fruits up 4% uh, or fruits up 1% and then produce in general up 4%. So basically all the positive numbers, anything above the axis um, shows that we've seen positive growth in terms of fruit and vegetable sales. And for the most part, since 2019, we've seen positive growth. Um, 2021, a little bit of a dip, but remember 2020, 20, or 2020 was at record levels. So that decrease should sort of be taken with a grain of salt, you know, still means a 8% increase relative to pre-pandemic levels. So overall, just the past few years, solid growth in terms of fruit and vegetable sales at the grocery level. Now, what does this mean, um, breaking this down by some specific items? So just looking at January 2023 data compared to the previous year, we've seen fruit and vegetable sales reach $3 billion for the month and up around 4% from the previous years. Now, some of our biggest movers have been tomatoes, which gained around $21 million dollars. Compared to last year, potatoes gained 25 million, lettuce gained 34 million, and cucumbers gained around $14 million. So we have seen a few of our prices see, or a few of our products see decreases as you know prices have gone up over the past year, but a lot of them have remained relatively strong, um, even as consumers are paying more in the grocery store for these products. So, you know, I'll wrap up by you know, asking whether con inflation is continu going to continue to decline. You know, we've seen the last few months um, decreases in prices month to month. And so, you know, if that continues to happen, we should start to see production costs for farmers continue to de decrease. And then, but there's also the question of what's going to happen with consumption 
in grocery stores. You know, but I will say that we have had strong demand for produce. You know, even though people are paying more for their products, they're they've continued to cut down um, on on some of what they're buying, but they're still spending a good amount of money on fruit and vegetable items in general. And with that, uh, just thank you all for your time, and I'd be glad to have take any questions.